The following game has no ESRB rating, nor is there any sort of listing for restrictive content found within the game. I do know from playing the game myself that it does contain some violent encounters, uh, including fighting various machines, people, and animals. Uh, there is also some bloodshed, but nothing I would consider gory or excessive. So, while viewer discretion is of course advised, were I to guess if it were to have been given an ESRB rating, I would say that at the very least it would have been rated teen, if not mature. So, that being said, definitely anyone under the age of 13 should not be watching this video. You have been warned. Greetings and salutations. I am Outlier, and I bid you welcome to this channel. Joining me today is, of course, my usual co-hosts, Snowball and Wolf. And today, we are going to be playing Imperion Galactic Survival. So, the premise of Imperion Galactic Survival, or at least, I think that's how you pronounce the name. That's how I've been pronouncing the name personally, so that's how I'm going to be pronouncing in this video. And if I'm wrong, well, it wouldn't be the first name I've, I've mispronounced. But anyway, the premise is that you are an evacuee from an Earth space station, entered, I believe, some sort of faster-than-light corridor, and ended up on this alien world, I believe, in somewhere in the middle of the Andromeda Galaxy. Mainly because you've been trying to get to the Andromeda Galaxy in the first place, and then some sort of strange alien attacked your station, and everything went kablooey. Uh, so you're basically just trying to survive and contact anybody from your uh, military organization for rescue and, um, I guess, just to rejoin them. So this game shares a lot of parallels with uh, another, I'm assuming it's still a highly popular game, called Ark Survival Evolved. Both are generally billed as uh, online cooperative slash competitive uh, multiplayer games, although they can be played in single player. The main definite noticeable difference is that rather than taming, di well building a base and taming dinosaurs to ride around and service pack mules and various other beasts of burden, uh, you build spaceships. Yes, there are dinosaurs in Imperion, but they're more of a random food source than you know, anything you can just capture and train. I thoroughly enjoy this game. Uh, I was, I've was i actually technically been playing it since the fifth version of the Alpha, although after around Alpha 7 or so, it stopped working on my old computer because my computer just couldn't handle it. And by the time I got a new computer, they were already up to Alpha 10. And 
technically, they claim that they've released the full version of it, or at least they no longer call it uh, an alpha or even a beta build, but they are still in the process of updating the game, and while I don't believe it's currently flagged as early access, they do periodically change things, so I'm not, nothing against the developers, but I'm not 100% it's fully finished, at least not what they might eventually consider fully finished. Well, I guess cinema games are a lot like that, where they just keep adding in things and adding things, but I digress. But, fair warning, what you see in this video may not be reflective of uh, this game in the near and slash or far future. So, with that out of the way, this game is of course made by... Thank you again. And uh, that being said, let us begin. Much like Ark and even Subnautica, there's various different uh, modes you can play, at least in single player. To be fair, I've never actually played this in multiplayer, but that's more the fact that I, I'm a hermit that doesn't really like engaging with total strangers. So I generally like playing in survival just simply because I do enjoy uh, the hunger and food mechanics and uh, all that stuff it just adds to the fun in my opinion set the name of the game put in a seed code which randomly generates originally the planets but they put an entire galaxy so it should just do that so a large planet makes it fun and so starting location there's a variety of starting locations so it's currently set to the temperate planet which contains lakes swamps deep forests oceans uh, basically it's a very habitable, fertile world that doesn't offer too many critically important problems. You do still have to contend with the local flora and fauna. Well, definitely tend to contend with some of the fauna, not so much the flora. And the very environment's not trying to kill you. So it's considered the best place to play for your first playthrough. But uh, this name ch uh, that I can't even pronounce does change. Originally, the temperate world was called Akura, uh, Akura A-U-K-R-A, I believe, but uh, they've since changed it to a random setting. I mean, I mean, the last couple of planets that I played on, I could at least pronounce the name of the world, but uh, there's that. Uh, in addition to that, you also have the option of dropping into an arid uh, planetoid. Uh, the main, it's similar to the temperate world, except that it's got parched mountains, uh, red savanna, more of a um, drier planet. The main issue, however, is that the atmosphere of the planet is not breathable. So in addition to finding food and water, well, not so much water, you also have to maintain your O2 as well. And that can get slightly difficult in the very beginning. We also have a swamp uh, planet, which is considered uh, uh, more for more advanced players. Uh, just simply because the swamp planet is home to uh, more dangerous creatures than the temperate world, although it is still does still contain a breathable atmosphere and you can find more advanced resources on the planet. And then you also have a snow planet where you do have to worry about temperature and it's again for experienced people. And then we're back to the temperate world. I should point out that you're not just stuck on one planet, you can actually build spacecraft capable of orbital transit and eventually ones that are FTL capable so you can actually well, if, even if you start on a temperate world you can still eventually travel to arid planets and swamp planets and snow planets and a variety of other types of planets uh, which it becomes necessary as you get more advanced in the game because not every planet has all the resources like for instance uh, Iquata yeah, I'm going to pronounce it Equita. Uh, only contains iron, copper, silicon, prometheum, which is your primary foods, fuel source, and uh, some gold, which uh, is not all that uh, prevalent. And uh, it doesn't contain any random meteorites, but if you somehow manage to burn through an entire planet's worth of iron, which is possible, I have done that. I was building something very large. 
Also, it was during Alpha 5 before they invented meteors. That was fun. So, you can also change the difficulty settings. Uh, I actually like setting it to a uh, custom setting. I do keep it as where you don't keep the inventory on death, although that, I do find that annoying, so I should probably change that. Progression and degradation speeds I like to keep to normal. In fact, everything I like to keep to normal except for a few things. One of those is auto miner depletion. So you can build these devices that mine resources for you. And you can have it set where they deplete the resources that they're mining. So it, the resources that they mine will be uh, finite. But as I learned from Alpha 5 back before they gave this option, you can eventually run out of resources. And while I believe they now have asteroids to replenish planets, I like keeping it as false, just simply because I then have an infinite amount of resources. Although I should point out, you don't get access to auto miners very early, so you can technically deplete resources quite quickly. Enemy difficulty, I'll keep the medium, overall drone presence, and, and drone and base attack as normal. As you build a bigger and better and more powerful base, uh, enemy forces periodically launch. I don't want to say token attacks, because if you're not paying attention and unprepared, they can do damage. But uh, it's nothing one person can't fight off, especially when you have multiple defensive hardpoints surrounding your base. Yeah, I'll keep blueprint constructor and repair speeds normal. Uh, so the blueprint spawn limit, when it's set to true, your any small vessel or harbor vessels that you bu that you uh, build for the blueprint factory that need to be spawned on either a base or a carrier or a capital vessel. Yeah, I'll get to those as needed. Uh, I like keeping that as false, just simply because that's the default. I will turn on block limits for certain devices as well as CPU points because those are some restrictions in building that I like setting because it means that I have to think about how I build. I just can't build this massive block of stuff and just put on a thousand guns and just destroy everything. However, I will keep mass and volume as false just simply because I don't like the volume restrictions. Uh, you can only carry so many things and while that normally doesn't bother me when you're building like vessels and certain parts are massive to the point where you actually can't fit them into your personal inventory uh, unless you have a larger spacesuit which you can't actually build and you have to salvage which is done through uh, random number generation as you loot hostile facilities so I like keeping this off because I don't like having that restriction. It does mean that mass is off as well, but uh, it happens. So with all this set, we hit OK, and then we start. All right, so here we go. Uh, so the first thing that happens is that you are in your drop pod. You can technically steer the drop pod so long as the primary direction you're aiming for is down. Uh, and you just basically try to steer yourself to an area that you think you can use. Now, they have changed the various the opening various times. Uh, as far as I know, the default opening we will see. Once we uh, smack it to the ground. Alright, and here we are. So, uh, first thing we've got to... Alright, so integrated data system or IDA states emergency situation detected. Protocol UCH001A has been initialized. Proceed. Ship status destroyed due to malfunction in the engine systems. Current situation crashed on an unknown planet. Pilot status successfully abandoned ship in an escape pod. Pilot health low but stable. Integrated data assistant IDA rebooted. That. Welcome back, Commander. Glad to see you alive. You've had incredible luck being dragged into the Titan's warp vortex and coming out alive in one piece. I'm currently trying to reestablish communication with Operation with the Operation Phoenix fleet. This may take a few minutes. So, the Titan you were originally part of a group of Terrans or humans uh, that was building a fleet to warp towards the Andromeda Galaxy. I believe at least I don't think they changed that yet. And the Titan was the massive capital ship leading everything. 
as I said in the opening, your space station that everything was docked at was attacked, and they pulled an emergency warp, and our escape pod got caught in the warp vortex. In the meantime, I've been storing our sensor and vent logs since our escape from Apollo Station, that's the place we were at, in the Imperion Journey uh, book. Press F1 for that. Open the entry starting the journey to read the log. Also make sure you pick any item, including the detector, from your escape pod before going elsewhere. Thanks for the reminder, Ida. Then we hit uh, F to grab all this fun stuff. So we do start with some stuff in the inventory. Uh, we have some energy bars, which is for food. Uh, a portable heater and cooler, because you do have to worry about freezing or overheating. Uh, some bandages for health. Antibiotic and antitoxic ointments for various certain medical conditions. Uh, basic survival tool, which is everything from our primary ore miner to, well, our initial ore miner, I should say, to basic defensive weapon. And then some health packs. And in addition, the container, um, okay, this stuff is good. But uh, the container can, um, for the escape pod also contains some emergency rations purified water which uh, at the stamina so there's no actual water you got to worry about it's just health food stamina which auto generates provided you're not hungry or severely injured and then O2 but uh, we don't have a space to yet so we don't have any access to O2 yet we have a detector which helps us see ores and then Ida replies with commander my efforts to reestablish communication with the fleet have failed we am tracking a weak signal of on a of a UCH beacon nearby UCH is our faction Make use of your detector to reveal its position. You also get a tent, which is our basic survival shelter where we sleep, and the detector, I confuse the detector with the ore scanner. The ore scanner allows us to see um, buried ores if they come out in chunks. Certain ores do that. The detector finds things for us, and then we also have a Santa Claus hat and a snowman's head, uh, because apparently uh, they added some stuff for a holiday update because of the holiday season last year and uh, they haven't removed them yet so they're still there so that's everything we get out of the escape pod and the oh that's new last time I played this you couldn't see the rings from uh, the surface I kind of like that it has been a while since I played this game much like Minecraft before I started filming videos of it it basically a case of I'd play it I'd stop I pick it back up again sometime later. I'd stop again, all that fun stuff. I think I just need that inventory. Alright, so as I said, this is our survival tool. So it has three modes salvage mode, which allows us to take apart building materials and structures and get the components in return, a defensive mode, which we basically shoot people with. And a resource mode, which removes terrain and extracts ores from underground resource deposits. Uh, does not pick up the ore automatically, so we do have to grab that ourselves. Let's put it to defensive mode, just to be on the safe side. And it is a laser gun. And then the detector finds things for us. So we've detected POI wreckage. Uh, some things are color-coded, so... Uh, it's a que if it's a question mark, we're not close enough to actually see what it is. And the yellow icon is our waypoint. So, Commander, the signal seems to originate from a teleport station close to our crash site. You might find more information there. And while the planets don't have a one-to-one -one ratio to them in terms of actual planet size, uh, they do have... Well, they're quite large. Put it <sighs> so, let's use a bandage to heal. Let's use a few of them. Or not. <sighs> there we are. Okay, and we'll also eat some food, so because we're hungry. And that's all the energy bars, but uh, we do have one emergency ration left, and the off chance that. The off chance we get ridiculously hungry. Mm. 
So the signal is only relayed from the station. I will add a marker of its source on your screen to uh, to your screen in a minute. You should go there and investigate. We talked to the teleport station. Identification has failed. This is probably the first evidence was happening here. I hope. Uh, please enter a valid code to access. Deactivate the console. Or it could be a trap. Yeah, conversation with her. We'll find out, I think. So I believe the white text is basically our character talking, whereas the blue text is Ida. Oh, look. Meat. Also, one thing I should point out, and it, this is us right here. Uh, we are in a default survival suit. It's not really a space suit, but it's basically default clothing of the character. But even then, we do have a small survival constructor. Uh, which can build a few basic things. So we can get a water and O2 condenser if we need uh, water O2. Uh, we can also get a portable constructor, a portable heater and cooler if we needed. The portable constructor is something we set down and can build more advanced stuff than what you see here. And we just basically it allows us to construct a few basic essentials. Because unlike before, they give you pretty much nothing now. Just some wreckage. Just got the wreckage. More wreckage. I really do not want to go to the question mark things. I have a feeling I know what they are. And I would try to avoid them. So there is a copper deposit, small copper deposit right there. Uh, it's 0.16 miles away. Really a straight line to that red marker, which I think is a spider nest. So we'll avoid that for now. Send out another ping. There is another small copper deposit right over there at 2.6 miles away. Also, there is a tech tree that um, unlocks new shiny things for you to build. So if you see in the corner, as I do... Any action, pick anything up, shoot something, kill it, harvest it for meat, build things. Uh, I gain experience, and that experience, once I get a maximum cap, uh, means I progress in level. And once I progress in level, I get tech points, which allow me to unlock new and shiny equipment. So if we go to the, this is not the tech tree go to the tech tree real quick so this is everything we can unlock they come in a variety of categories of various things we can build so uh, the base category has everything that we can build for a stationary planter even in space base basically a facility we can build that doesn't go anywhere there's also a similar version for a capital vessel which is a large massive vessel that we can build uh, some of the things I believe uh, are shared between the base and the capital vessel so I think think, but I'm not 100% certain. If I were to unlock, say, the fuel tank uh, tier 1 for the base, it should also unlock for the capital vessel as well. But don't hold me to that. I could be mistaken. And also have small vessels, which are flying vessels that um, allow you to fly in the air, transit to space, uh, re-enter the atmosphere, and then land. Uh, they can be... It is possible for them to achieve... FTL ranges, but they don't jump as far as capital vessels. And, uh, capital vessels do give you better uh, amenities and other uh, abilities that small vessels can't. There's also hover vessels, which are basically ground craft. Uh, miscellaneous, which are your... Just basically anything that doesn't really fit into any other category. Uh, so we have base starters and hover vessel starters and small vessel and capital vessel starters. We'll have to get to these eventually, hopefully. Oh, look, they added ladders now. That's new. And various other things. I guess we got to unlock the portable constructor. And then for tools, we have well, basically tools. So we got a flashlight, a survival tool, a chainsaw, the ability to color and customize anything we build, various detectors. 
And then we can also upgrade the further down the tree and get multi-tools which are used for building and then drills which are used for basically cutting the planet in half by hand no there's only so far down you can dig but if there wasn't you probably could uh, and various other tools and then we have of course hand weapons which are basically guns also light armor and explosives so that's the tech tree. Uh, the screen you saw earlier is the blueprint, blueprint factory. So anything that you build, you can actually save a copy of uh, and then have it spawn later. If you have another playthrough or you just basically have it get blown up and you don't feel like building from scratch again. So as you can see, I have quite a few different things. Uh, some of the stuff is but is by default so like the escalion that i believe was created by the developers the black star the same whereas things like the weasel the walrus uh, the sparrow that's all stuff i made and then you also probably will see a couple here that share the same names as some of the stuff that i've built or okay oh yeah i mean the sparrows here uh this is from a uh, the prior playthrough that I did back in like Alpha 5 and 6. Uh, after I switched computers, I transferred over the files from the ships that I had. Uh, if it's red, that means it can't be spawned in the current um, playthrough. I had issues with this capital vessel. I eventually managed to sort them out, but um, yeah, it, I was in the process of building a new one. And when I decided to start over and make a video about it. So there's that. Uh, there's also uh, various the Imperial uh, Imperionopedia, which basically gives you various information about the game and various functions, various solo missions, and we're currently working on the tutorials. So there's that. There's also various other screens, but those are generally the three that I pay attention to the most. There's also the map as well. So we are some distance away, and I guess we're just going to go pick up everything along the way and then just ping everything to see what else is new. So this is a rock, as you can clearly see. If we set the survival tool to resource mode, we can shoot it, and it becomes smaller chunks of rock, specifically crushed stone, which is a resource that we can pick up, which is useful for certain things. Once I get the ability to actually build those certain things, uh, I'll explain what they are. Oh, and this is a special rock. It's still a rock, but rather than getting crushed stone, if we shoot it, we get copper, which is one of the basic resources you're going to need to build, well, pretty much anything and everything in, the, uh, in this game. The other two basic resources are being silicon and cut and, uh, Iron. Almost at copper again. Uh, oh look, there's a damaged hover bike. 1.3 meter miles away. So if we grab this copper. There's also iron 1.2 miles away. Copper less than 100 feet below us. More rocks. Used to playing um, Vulcanoid to keep it in the wrong button to pick things up. More rocks. Well, directly, not really much. I mean, you can use the crushed stone to uh, build cement, which is my primary base building material. More because uh, I use iron and various other materials to build well pretty much everything not a base so rather than uh, having more stuff compete with uh, an ever decreasing supply of resources I just use cement because cement really can't be used for anything else in addition to it and one thing that I really like the, uh, if you ever run out of iron or copper or silicon and you have a more advanced constructor available 
can actually turn crushed stone into those ores. Uh, it's highly inefficient and you need a ridiculously large pile of crushed stone to make practically very little of the other resources. But it is a way, especially if you're not near a uh, large node or any sort of resource pile, to basically, uh, what do I want to say, uh, build things. So this is a damaged hover bike. This is a hover vehicle. It's not one that I built. Uh, it's not, it's basically the developers built it. And um, I can use it because its core is set to public, I believe. So it's damaged just for storyline purposes. I don't believe, yeah, it's missing its generator and a fuel tank. But if I can find few, build those two things and find some fuel, I'll be able to actually use it for my own nefarious purposes. But uh, if you saw before earlier, I actually went up a level and I keep hitting the blueprint factory. So we are now level 3, somehow we skipped level 2. And we now have 25 uh, unlocking points to unlock things. So first thing I want to do is unlock the portable constructor. And I didn't touch on this before, but there are various icons next to each, um, not icons, little squares of color next to each item. And each item and each square of color denotes what constructor those, those things can be built by. So for instance, the, portal con the portable constructor only has a purple square, which means it can only be built in the survival constructor, which is also the suit constructor, uh, this thing right here. I can't build it yet because I need some iron ore, and I don't have iron ore. I have some copper ore. Wait, hang on. No, that's a portable here. I need. I still need iron ore, but I still don't have iron ore. And the suit constructor can't turn crushed stone into ores, I don't think. It's pretty much all I can build. You get emergency O2 detector, uh, some stuff I already have. Uh, I think I already read this, so... Uh, but then things like, say, the uh, wireless connection uh, can only be built in other constructors. So, like, for instance, anything that has a yellow square can be built in the portable constructor. So, things like uh, base starters and hover vehicle starters uh, can be built with the portable constructor. But the small, con but things like the wireless con um, connection need to be built in the small constructor which I believe is for hover vehicles, the SV constructor, which is, no, small constructor is for bases, I'm sorry. Small constructor uh, is a small constructor you put on a base, can build some basic uh, materials and other things. The SV constructor is a constructor you can s put in your small vehicles and I think even hover vehicles. Then we have the large and advanced constructors, which are bigger constructors for your base and uh, capital vessels. So, I need to find iron, basically. And we don't have any iron. No, you're just a big rock. These are just. There's more crushed stone. Also, the game will auto remove things if you don't pick them up quickly. So, I mean, I do have three minutes, so it's not like you're on a massive countdown timer, but. If you're not paying attention or you walk away, you can actually lose resources. So pick up the fiber because fiber is used for pretty much everything. And that's more crushed stone. I mean, I know that there's an iron deposit 0.15 uh, miles that direction. I guess there isn't any uh, major issues. I don't think these guys will attack me, but just to be on the safe side. Also, almost forgot, probably should make some energy bars, because I've been picking up plant protein, and uh, the bars are basically a food source, because you do keep getting hungry. They do also, I think, heal you a little bit? No, just give you food, and most food does uh, have a perish time, so uh, I don't know exactly the amount of time required before it... Uh, things spoil, but most foodstuffs do eventually spoil if not kept in the fridge.
keep thinking the sounds that I'm hearing are for threatening at creatures, but I think it's just the parasaurs, which are a source of meat. But I don't believe I can actually cook meat with the survival constructor. I believe I need the portable one for that, and here's some more copper. Get back here. Are you anything interesting? No, you're just a standard rock. You're a mushroom. Oh, you're a, uh... Puffball vegetable. Forget the exact name for this kind of, uh, plant. Whoa. Tricked out a bit of scenery. But, uh, they basically give you vegetables. Which is a type of food, which I could probably eat, but... Again, they spoil, and... I think I actually can make, uh, turn vegetables into plant protein. Which I can then turn into energy bars, so... Go back, grab you. Pick up one vegetable. Turn that one vegetable into two plant protein, and, uh... That two plant protein can become a new energy bar. Alright, so I'm not seeing any iron rocks just lying around, so I guess we're going to have to go to that iron resource. Just grab some herbal leaves. The iron is kind of in the middle of the forest, and there are some hostile creatures in the forest sometimes, so I was trying to avoid going into here. I mean, I don't think these guys are hostile, at least I've never been attacked by them, but then again, uh, I usually only encounter these guys right here with the spiky tails uh, very later in the game. And why does it sound like the parasaurs are calling from this side? Maybe because there are parasaurs there. And, uh, these bugs will attack you if you get too close. But generally, they leave you alone. Like, I don't like how he's coming to get me, so... I'm just going to shoot him. And I got hit. And it's dead now. So I can loot the corpse and just find alien parts. Sometimes I find meat. Grab some more copper. So the iron deposit's right here. Since I'm still technically set to um, terrain mode. Oh look, I don't even need to hit the uh, deposit because there's some iron rocks right here. You can tell because of the blue streaks. Much like how the copper rocks were um, had red streaks in them and silicon will actually have white. I believe well, white splotches in them. I generally don't like chopping into uh, resource uh, deposits, if I can help it. Mainly because, especially with medium or large deposits, I can just set up an auto miner eventually. And um, get them and just get a semi-infinite supply of resources that way. But I now have 12 iron ore, which allow me to be, allows me to build the portable constructor. So I get rid of this stuff. Turn the remaining protein into energy bars. Eat said energy bars. Use my last bandage. gonna go through and just grab the stuff. Uh, I do get honey from the weird tentacle hive things. Does it expire? It does expire. Don't be too worried if if you have a whole bunch of food and it expires. 
while you can't eat perished food, it is useful for certain things. And there have been times when I've actually collected or grown stuff that I've just let spoil just simply because I need the, um, uh, the rotted food for something. You can technically use plant protein just to make rotted food, but a lot of times I use the plant protein for something else. Okay, so the uh, portable constructor is done. So if we take it out, we can plop it on the ground. Also, planters do have a day-night cycle, as denoted in the upper uh, right-hand corner. As you can see, there's now 15 seconds left of daylight out, and uh, the sun is setting. Now, as, uh, as I build vehicles that are capable of, well, faster speeds, I can technically chase the sun, so to speak. And uh, the planet rotates around, so if you keep heading towards the sun, you can technically stay in daylight, and if you head it away, uh, you can cause night to fall faster. But if we act as the portable constructor, we can make quite a few extra things. So. As I said, we can turn the crushed stone that I have into more iron ore, copper ore, silicon ore. We can refine said ore into various ingots. We can use the ingots to make various other extra things. We can make more food than just energy bars using this thing. That's the spoiled food right there. And it's mostly needed for nutrient solutions, which are used to build growing plots and various other things. We can make some basic medicine. We can also make some basic tools if we had them unlocked as well as some basic structural components and uh, equipment. So as you can see, well, not as you can see, as you, if you remember, let's grab this real quick. Where is the damaged hovercraft? Damaged hover bike is 1.5 miles that way. Let's grab these real quick. So we head back to the hover bike. get back in the seat, we bring up the control panel, and it says that the generator and fuel tank are missing. Both are required to actually turn the thing on, the generator to actually power all the components, and the fuel tank to, well, supply the generator with fuel. So if we get back out, put the portable constructor back down, access it, and we look at the various equipment. Where is it? Oh. We have the small generator which requires 10 steel plate, one motor, and two electronics as well as the small fuel tank, which require one electronics, five steel plate, and an optical fiber. Now, technically, I don't need to build all these components uh, just to build the thing. They do that automatically with this constructor now. They didn't always, but they do now. Uh, and for steel plate, I need a bunch of iron ingots. For electronics, I need copper and silicon. And for the optical fiber, I need silicon. And if you notice, I have a small amount of iron ore, a small amount of copper ore, but no silicon ore, which is what the crushed stone is for. Uh, so if I go and select, I don't have enough of anything to, of everything to actually build the motor, but if I select the fuel tank, we'll put the fuel tank in the construction queue, and then we'll start building all the various components that are needed to actually build the fuel tank. So it'll build the it'll take some of the copper ore and build some iron ing, copper ingots. And then we'll start on the next piece, which are silicon, which is a silicon ingot, which technically gets me I think ten ingots. But in order to get the silicon ingot, I need silicon ore, which I don't have, which it's using the crushed stone to make. So it's making the ore and then making the ingot. Then it'll make the electronics using the copper and silicon ingots. Then it'll make some iron ingots and make plates and the optical fiber with spare silicon and then I'll make the fuel tank which it will put into output right here which I then take and then use for whatever so since I don't have a flashlight what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tent that I have plop it down here and uh, turn night into day so it basically allows you to sleep and fast forward time So, let's see, what do I need? So, uh, even though it fast forwarded time, it still built the fuel tank. And in addition to the fuel tank, it also built these other things. So it's not always a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of uh, stuff. So any extra materials not used to, used to build the thing that I wanted to build, just go back into input. And if I need, say, another fuel tank, 
rather than pulling everything from the basic ores and just making that, it'll take all of this stuff to make uh, the fuel tank. But right now I need a generator, and for that I need a motor. So if I go to components, if I can remember where that is. The motor requires nanotubes, and nanotubes requires carbon substrate. And carbon substrate requires plant fibers, which I did not put in inventory. Which is why I couldn't build it. Told you, plant fibers are used for practically everything. Now I can build the generator. So now it just builds directly builds the steel plate because I had some iron ingots available. And now it's making the carbon substrate from stone dust and the plant fibers, which stone dust comes from the crushed stone. That's making the nanotubes using the carbon substrate. I'll make the noter and extra electronics, and then it'll build the generator. Another thing that I need the um plant fibers for, if I can find it, here it is, is to make biofuel, which is your basic fuel resource. I'm just going to help myself with the copper right here. Also, you look under the mini-map on the uh, upper right-hand corner, you'll see the temperature gauge, and uh, as I walk into this biome, it um, the temperature dropped, or just simply because it was early in the morning, temperature dropped to uh, 57 degrees, which was below the uh, survivable threshold for the suit that I'm currently wearing. So if I were to uh, remain an extended period of time in this at that temperature, I would eventually get cold and then start freezing, and then eventually dying because of frostbite and hypothermia. Whereas if it stays uh, too high, I eventually overheat. And I believe the basic suit's good for... It's currently 77 degrees, so... Comfort zone, which is how uh, the temperature range I can survive in without any adverse problems, is 59 degrees Fahrenheit to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. a personal choice. I can't have it set to Celsius. I just choose not to. Again, personal choice. So it's in the process of making biofuel. Just add the uh, uh, fibers that I just found to that. So if I take the, end, the generator out, and I can basically just... Uh, and again, put these things in my inventory. Use the volume that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I can basically put them anywhere, but so long as it's attached to the actual uh, machine, I can. It'll still work. So I can basically put the generator out here for all that it matters. And uh, so long as it's registered as connecting to this vehicle, it will still function as part of this vehicle. So. I believe they basically put hints the generator goes where it says G, so I'll put that there. Mainly because the generator does put out heat and radiation, which, if you're too close to, can cause problems. And so then we put the fuel tank next to it. Also, while I didn't do that because I just don't much care right now, I can actually rotate the uh, objects around for aesthetic reasons if I feel like it. So now that, so if I go back here and then check here. There should be no alerts, and uh, the new pieces that I put onto the ship are listed as ungrouped. I can put the various components on the vessel into various groups, which allow me to uh, flag certain things as on or off uh, by the group, as opposed to just turn them on and off individually. But this thing only had three ground propulsion engines. And I can make my own groups, I can delete, uh, I can remove things from groups. I can make my own groups, as I just said, add things to the last group, or I can just simply auto-group, which I'm just going to do right here. And it puts everything in a uh, computer-generated group. And sometimes I'm fine with it, other times I'm not, and I'll just uh, adjust as I feel like it. But uh, we can't turn it on because there's no fuel. And this was this is what the vessel looks like on. It has a nice little HUD, but because it's all, it has no gas right now, uh, it doesn't do anything. So if I go back to the portable constructor, I have fuel now. And if I take everything out of the inventory of the constructor, 
I can then technically take the constructor with me. I mean, I could without moving everything manually, but I felt like it, so I did. And I can access the fuel tank directly and just uh, add my biofuel to there. Or I can uh, bring up the control panel and go to the main screen and do it that way. It's just basically two different ways to do the same thing. Uh, you don't need to connect um, the fuel tanks to the generators using any sort of other device, or at least not as yet. So generally with a lot of my vehicles, I like burying everything that's not needed on the front or sides of the vessel deep within. So a lot of times I'll use the control panel for things. Also, if you have enough fuel, I can actually withdraw the fuel. And um, as you saw, I put in biofuel, and when I withdrew it, I got this uh, fuel pack. Uh, that's just by default, it just takes fuel. But it doesn't give you back whatever fuel you put in, it just gives you fuel packs. But um, any type of fuel counts, so I can dump in like you know, the capacity of this current fuel tank is 300 units of fuel. And each unit of biofuel gets me 10. If I had 30 things of biofuel, I could completely refuel the, uh, this tank. If I had a second tank, then the capacity would be uh, 600. But for our purposes, uh, that's, that'll suffice. So we just hop back in, turn it back on, and uh, it turns on. And uh, it doesn't have any equipment. So the bar right above the hot bar just has some random nonsense. But it does allow us to travel faster than we can on foot. And it does also have a certain uh, clearance, so specifically... Alright, so we found the UCH Hildenberg, Heidenberg, uh, chapter, which starts Chapter 1, Human Remains. This planet has seen a lot of fights. Uh, yours is only the last in a series. Track down the UCH fleet uh, signal Ida is picking up. Probably find the remains of your fellow comrades. So let's start this mission because it's next in the arguably uh, storyline. So uh, Ida says that we found something, and it's a Pelican-class transporter, the healed the Heidenberg indeed. Uh, but totally destroyed. I'm not sure we'll find anything useful here. Uh, we will eventually. And uh, we also find a damaged uh, dart. Oh, uh, they keep talking. Uh, so I think I'd have said something and then replied with, we should keep looking anyway. Ida has marked a possible target for investigation and showing an electromagnetic signature. There's that thing right there. Now if we look on the lower right hand screen, uh, we see the uh, ship uh, status panel. So currently the top bar of what's in the lower left hand screen is um, the amount of power that the generator is providing, so it's at 3.1%, so we're perfectly fine with that. And then the bar underneath that is fuel, so we have very little fuel, but because the generator is not running all that high and there's not very many components requiring fuel energy, which in turn requires less fuel, we actually currently have 79.8 minutes worth of gas, so a little over an hour and, uh, well, yeah, almost an hour and a third. Uh, we'll eventually run out of gas and then the hover bike will stop working again. We turn it off, we stop wasting fuel. I can technically leave it on if I want, but um, you know, it basically wastes gas just sitting there. And right now gas is at a premium, so let's turn it off and get out. I set this to defensive mode just in case. Also, if I ever actually want to see what uh, was going on, I'm going to say it should actually list give a listing of the... Uh, uh, text that should have been read, but I guess not. So anyway, let's just find a bunch of wreckage and then get to the uh, EM signal, which is right here. So let's have a look inside. Uh, it's got some stuff and a note, which I don't actually see because it's story unrelated. It's going to be part of a status report. And uh, the status report is uh, corrupted a little bit, but it has what we can read out is has hit us hard, kind of a laser projector, a very advanced rocket. Got separated from the main fleet. These Xerax have cut us off from the rest, trying to bring us down. They will be successful. The captain has sent the emergency rescue signal. 
We're making emergency landing. All engines are off. I'm off to the escape pod. Chief Engineer First Class. Pallet out. Chief Pallet. Uh, one of the engineers I worked with on my first assignment on a pollen station. That's us talking again. By the way, Ida, did you notice the whole record seems a bit weathered? Uh, like it was lying around here for some time. It's also technically upside down. And Ida is analyzing the traces. First of all, show that whole damage happened about 11 to 13 months ago. So, not only did we get caught in a uh, FTL wake, we traveled through time. Months? How can we... Time travel. Okay, let's say this is correct. Everybody is dead. It is correct, Commander. Concerning the events of our arrival, this could explain a lot. But time around the corner. Chief Lutz had a theory about the time dilation of a city of an unstable warp field. Chief Lutz is uh, another character of the story. Uh, to be fair, I've yet to meet any of these people. I'm assuming they're all dead. And then the regular warp vortex around the Titan we got dragged into certainly qualifies, I believe they said. Could be considered one. I had a correct, Commander. I will analyze this further. Perfect. And let's consider this not 2473, but 2474 for whatever reason. I think we should investigate, investigate the records more closely. Which I will. Maybe we'll get more info about what's happened to the fleet, if nothing else. Now, one thing I do like about this game is that... While we're at it, detect an electronic current nearby. I really should stop talking while the story is playing out. For that, I am truly sorry. But again, I've played this quite often. Several times, technically. So, I technically already know what happened, so... Yeah, that's no excuse. For that, I do apologize. But anyway, as I was saying, uh, I can technically salvage this wreckage. I can pull it off parts and... Various other things. However, if I were to use, say, the construction of the survival tool and just start shooting things, it A takes quite a bit and I don't really get all that much. So just this one destroyed steel block gets me two steel plate. And if I pop out the portable constructor and look at it, look at steel, large steel blocks, which I can't technically build yet, or with this thing. Yes, uh, large steel blocks I think require an actual, a, lar a smaller large constructor. But basically, I'm just going to unlock a few things real quick that I kind of need. But as I was saying, the, um, Steel blocks require more than two uh, steel plates. I think they actually require ten per block. So uh, I'm not getting a full amount to rebuild the block for two reasons. One, it's set to salvage mode, which only gets me part of the components. Uh, another thing is that this structure, wreckage, whatever you want to call it, it's arguably classified as a base, but whatever you technically want to call it is not is actually not mine. So it won't actually get me full um, resources back. Now, if I build something known as a core, which is this thing right here, I can technically flag a coreless object like this as mine. So, when I talked about the starters uh, blocks, real quick, uh, I said that uh, starters here. Uh, basically, it's a core and a couple blocks. And what this basically does is it tells the game that this is going to be your unique object. And everything that you see in the game that is not natural, so basically not the trees or the ground or the rocks, requires a core to be built. So the hover bike has a core. It's actually... I don't think I can show you right here because it only gets so high, but if I jump off, the core is actually...
I angle down as far as I can go. The core is right here, and it's a public faction core. And it's a public faction core um, because it's a part of the public faction, which is why I said it's technically not mine, but I can still use it. But things like this wreckage, I don't believe I actually have a core. So if I build a core and plop it on this base, I can consider this base mine and then I can build on it, I can take it apart if I had the correct tools, and uh, do all fun things with it. So I could technically, like say, salvage these engines, which technically shouldn't be on a base anyway, but this is arguably a ship. This base is supposed to represent a ship, so that's why these engines are here. But I can basically salvage the end, flag this base as mine, salvage the engines, and then use those engines for something that I'm trying to build. Or I can just take them apart and use the components for something else that I'm trying to build. So that is actually one of the fun things I enjoy doing in this game. Just finding various wreckages of uh, small vessels and other ships and other things. And either try flag them, flagging them as mine and trying to repair them or just consuming them for parts. Now, another thing that I can do, I say this, let's see if someone else left a note nearby. As I said, this place is upside down, so this is the roof, that's the floor. Was the floor. Well, I have to hop over everything. So I'm looking for someone by the name of Ensign Emerson, or at least a note by them. I doubt that's going to tell me anything. But uh, while the back half of the Hindenburg or Heidenberg uh, is upside down, the front half is on its side. So this one actually has a... That's a large constructor. Yeah, that's a large constructor. It doesn't have the thingies on the side. So if I were to say, since I think this is technically not connected to that, that's another thing. Every uh, base or... Well, technically not the vehicles, but... Basically, any base you build has to be one solid object, or at least connected to everything, uh, every other part. So if you shoot off, like say, if this was connected and I broke the connection, uh, this half, whichever half is still connected to the core, stays and the other half gets destroyed. I mean, technically, that might should be true for other things, like small vessels and the like, but if you remove a part, it just still flags as part of that. So, I'm not quite certain what exactly I'm looking for, but it was going to be on this half of the vessel. Yeah, it's a landing gear. Oh look, a multi-charge. That could be useful. So, I, so this is how I know that this is the bottom. That's the landing gear. It can only fit on the bottom. Why there's a cargo container right next to the landing gear, I have no idea, but it's there. The various cargo uh, containers do contain a small amount of resources and other materials. Nothing really to write home about unless it's like a specialty one. But uh, at least early on in the game, it's still useful. Come on. But if we want around to the front of this vehicle, or capital vessel as it technically is, uh, we see the cockpit. Random more stuff. And if I cut into the cockpit, one button. Right, gotta remember no suit, no jetpack. Basically, just how far I can naturally jump. Alright, so uh, we're here. Just 
a couple of medical devices. Since this is, as I said, technically on its side, everything is also on its side. Including this chair, which we can sit in. Alright, so I'm just going to cut all this stuff away because it's in my way. Including the window. Alright, so that's a solar light and some growing panel, uh, growing plots. Technically, should try to cut away in. Seriously, come on. This doesn't help, it doesn't actually tell me what I'm looking for. Oh, so it actually does say a few things. But uh, here, Ensign Emerson, Captain Brenner, and most of the flight team were killed just seconds ago. Objecto hit the bow amidship, so it was incredibly lucky. Um, I absolutely justify criticisms made after we ran into this mess caused Lieutenant Semi to check the lifeboats seconds before the bridge was hit. Karma? Maybe not. No. Uh, no. Maybe not. Now, I can't leave this room. The doors are sealed. I'm sitting in front of the lifeboat section. Cannot enter it. Which doesn't matter anyway. The whole section is missing and I'm standing, uh, staring into the sky through a big hole in the hull. Ground is coming closer. I just heard the tearing of metal. The ship is breaking apart. This might be my final entry in this PDA. I'll put it here, maybe I'll uh, continue it later, I hope at least our engineers did their job in creating these structurally strengthened sections. Emerson, Ensign, UCH, Heiden, Heidelberg. I think that's the thing I'm supposed to try to find, but for some reason it's not letting me find it. At all. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut away... We're going to jump our way up here. We're going to get within range of this. Cut this panel away. I'm going to do a leap right here, and uh, well, this gets us here. So if we talk to the Heidenberg, please enter verification uh, code. I don't remember where I picked this up, but AI root 34. Good luck, survivor. Deactivate the console. Right, I feel like I skipped a step somewhere. Much as I like this game, it does sometimes have issues. Alright, so one thing I do like is that I have this little remote uh, controlled uh, drone. It's mainly used for constructing large things, but I can actually use it to fly around and scatter around. It does have a very limited range if I go too far. Uh, I'll start losing connection, and if I go far enough, it'll basically stop. But, as far as I know, the drone doesn't actually take any damage. And while I can personally be attacked, uh, I don't believe the drone itself can be. And also, anything that I have equipped, like uh, the detector, uh, or the survivor tool, I can still technically use. So, for instance... I can take this chunk apart using the drone and I still get two steel plates. So I swing it around through here. Yes, yeah, so that gets me back into this room.
I want in here? I don't think so. There's a fridge in here, though. Gotta keep remembering, the ship's on its side, so... Everything that looks like it should be... Uh, everything that looks sideways, it's oriented to what it's supposed to be as down. Alright, so I am missing something. What's in this thing? Oh, here we are. This is what I was trying. So this is just what I read. Uh, Commander, the optical sense of sex is something attached to the machines over there. And so I gotta go to a strange marker. For some reason, the game uh, reads this as a slightly solid object, so I can't shoot through it. Although I did practically fall to my well. I would say fall to my death, but not really. It wasn't that low to the ground. Alright, and I grabbed whatever it was. Uh, I pad taped on it. Uh, looks like it's written in our Academy uh, Secret Code. Let's see if I can still decipher this. Alright, so timestamp August 26, 2473. Do we ever find this? The uh, Heidelberg is lost. Uh, only a few survived the crash. Plan uh, planet has already made contact with local natives. The Talon, they must have seen us coming down. We literally crashed on their front lawn. We are now heading towards the Talon settlement. Xerox are on our heels, but it seems they but seem to have lost interest. Or they're currently held up by the rest of the fleet. The last comm we be, uh, got basically said the fleet is in retreat. The Titan is lost. Probably crashed on the moon. Not sure if the crew survived. The MS Grand has sent an encrypted signal, which we hope the Xerox will not be able to cipher for a while. This is our ticket out of here. Some friends have put up a uh, teleport device in the wreckage area a few kilometers away. Emerson, lucky son of a uh, expletive, has generated a key card. I'm not sure if there are other ships coming down or other survivors. I'll have a hint to those that might come later uh, with instruction on how to generate that key card. For authentication, use AI Route 34, otherwise the console will self-destruct instantly. If this plan fails, I advise every other survivor to go find one of the Talon villages. These guys have uh, helped us survive and might help you as well. Good luck to us and whoever is reading this. See you soon. M. Okay, so this is a slowly parenting a picture of the teleporter. Hmm. But no info where to find it. Ida, where is this pile of rubble? Uh, can find the bridge or uh, aforementioned console. Good news. I've located the console and the writer is speaking about, which was the console we found earlier. Uh, after cutting into this, so I knew we had to be in the bridge, I just missed a step. Alright, so here it is. Let's see if we can get the key card by accessing the console. So, AI Route 34, good luck, survivor, deactivate the console. Okay, that was the easy part. Where do we find the teleporter? Yeah, the thing that's uh, back where we were. Remember the station of the crash site? We start there. I've marked it on your map. Go back to the start and find the console. I'm not going to do that real quick because for two reasons. One, it's, well, getting close to night time. And two, I know what's going to happen and we don't have the equipment to deal with what's going to happen. So if we head a little over this way. Uh, it says damage UCH dart. So this is a fun little thing. So a this dart is what's known as a small vessel. So if we just simply land right here, turn off, pop out. The dart is a small vessel, as I just said. And small vessel, as I said earlier in this episode, is a small flying vehicle. So I can hop in, and if I look at the control panel, I can't access the control panel. Because unlike the hoverbike, which is has a public core built into it, the dart right here currently has no core, which I think is supposed to go like right there. It's also missing quite a few engines and fuel. All but anyway, if I were to plop down the portable constructor, access it, uh, put in all the basic components that I need,
Uh, what I can do is build a new one. Yeah, there we are. So because it does require quite a few resources, I did eventually run out. So while I can build one core, I can't build a second one. And I did not put in the copper ore. If you notice, uh, some plant, I'm assuming this is plant protein that I had, spoiled and turned into spoiled food. So I'm going to eat the remaining energy bars that I have. Turn this off. Not build the core. Put in a new core. Turn this back on. So rather than eating up a large amount of crushed stone, not being able to do anything about it, it's going to actually make titanium plates. Interesting. Or did that just happen to be in my inventory? Yeah, I'm not seeing titanium plates here. I don't even know what they're for. So I'm guessing I picked them up and didn't realize it. But because I just tossed in all of my spare ore, I can now technically build two. Another thing that I'm going to build is this shotgun. Because, as I said, I know what's coming and I'm going to need more equipment. In fact, what I would like is to build the assault rifle as well, but I don't have enough electronics to do that. At least not yet. Mainly because I don't have any silicon ore and I don't have enough crushed stone to make enough ore to get more silicon ingots. So, this is the core. And it's starting to make the shotgun. I should probably make some ammo for it as well. It's going to be like 30 rounds. Let's put the tent down and turn night into day. Alright, so I now have a shotgun and... Um, 30 rounds of ammo. So unlike the survivor tool, which has infinite ammo, uh, all the other weapons require some form of ammo, be it batteries for power cells, or in case of projectile weapons, actual physical ammo. So, I now have a, me a better means of defending myself. I can set this to resource mode and just try to gather enough um, crushed stone and other resources to build enough silicon to be able to build electronics to get other weapons. Also, the multi. Alright, so now I have 140 units of crushed stone, and uh, this particular biome is actually rather cold, so... If I stay here, I will eventually freeze. However, I don't have one on me. If I go to the survival constructor, I can't actually build the portable heater yet. Can. Only requires one iron ore, which I do not have yet. Where is my constructor? We take the ore out, build the portable heater. A little water condenser as well. <laughs> and I'm beginning to feel cold. So as I said, uh, if I'm in a cold environment for too long, I'll eventually freeze. So that's why I'm working. I uh, decided to build the portable heater slash cooler. It will, if I put it down, it'll give me an area of influence for all intents and purposes that will 
uh, even up the temperature, so I'll basically be able to be fine. Just remember, it's part of the suit control, uh, survival constructor, so. And apparently can only be built in the survival constructor, too. Teleporter, teleportation station is 1.6 miles away. In the meantime, while we wait for that to finish, uh, keep some of the ore. Put that in. Alright, so that's done. Put the ore back. Make the assault rifle now. Then I can put... I actually already had one. Oops. Oh well. But, um, now I have two. <sighs> so it evens out the temperature, and now I'm fine. And like all survival equipment, uh, it's portable, uh, like the portable constructor, I don't actually need to worry about power. I just picked that up without meaning to do so. Alright, so as this is being built, what else can I build? I'll also build a multi-tool. Also, if I look at 23 unlock points... Now, every detect tree is also level cap, so I can only get certain things up to a certain level because I'm at level 4, I can only get things locked level 3 and below. So things like the sniper rifle or the explosive device or even light armor, I need to be level 5 in order to unlock for all intents and purposes. So unlock the war scanner just for a little fun. Okay, so... It didn't unlock the detector for the small vessel. I unlocked it for the hover vessel, but of course the small vessel one's actually level locked as well. So I look at fuel tank for both the capital vessel and the base. If I unlock it for the base, it is unlocked for the capital vessel. So as I said, certain things are shared between certain vehicles. I don't know if the small vessel and the hover vessel share anything anymore. Uh, a lot of times. Most stuff is flagged for one, but not the other. Well, things like generators seem to be for both. As is fuel tanks. And cargo boxes. Even, I would say even basic guns, but I don't have enough unlock points for that. Now, so back to what I was saying. I put this in here. So, the core will allow me to flag this as mine, and I can, I, much like any other device, I can put it anywhere that I want. And once I put it down, this ship becomes mine. It gets flagged as mine, the game considers it mine. Anything that's my enemy will try to attack it and destroy it. Anything that um, is an ally will probably just basically ignore it. So, um, that's how the cores work. One thing of note that I should point out is make certain that the core is well hidden or defendable. Because, as I said, the core flags the thing as yours. If the core gets destroyed, it no longer operates, it's no longer considered yours. If you do play in multiplayer and you build a nice big shiny thing that you like and enjoy and everybody likes and enjoys, if somebody co uh, comes through and you're in an area that they can attack you, they can blow up your core, put their core in, and basically steal your thing. Yes, I think that's how it works. As I said, I try to avoid multiplayer where I can. And also, while once something slagged as mine, and once the multi-tool gets built, and I had uh, power for it, uh, anything that I remove using the multi-tool, I can basically get the block itself back, except for the core. So once you remove the core, it's no longer flagged as yours, and uh, rather than getting blocked, you just get parts back. Much like if you were salvaging it using the um, survival construction uh, tool. I did. Nope, 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 stop. Go away. So, 
also, if you ever plan on doing any long-term building, the multi-tool and its upgraded friend in its upgraded version are your best friend. It does require multi-charge ammo, which is hard to come by, uh, especially this early in the game. Mostly because, if you look at how to build it, it requires Promethium pellets, which requires Promethium, which uh, I haven't found yet and don't have access to. So, uh, building things is probably going to be problematic for right now. But, um, yeah, it's used for a variety of things, mostly to salvage, much like um, the survival constructors, uh, the survival tools uh, uh, salvage mode. Uh, but in addition to salvaging, it can also change and rotate blocks, it can repair blocks, it can retrieve blocks, which unlike salvage will um, get you the resources required to build the block. Uh, retrieve blocks gets you the actual block. You can also upgrade blocks if the blocks are part of an upgrade tree, and downgrade them as well, provided of course you have the block is at full hit points and uh, you have all the requisite materials to upgrade and downgrade it with. But that's only for certain blocks. And since the multi-tool and since ammo for the multi-tool is hard to come by, uh, as I said, I only really use it for very specific things until I can get more ammo. Speaking of guns and ammo, there, put you there, put you there, put you there, reload the assault rifle, probably get more ammo for it. Also, if we um, just pick it up, it drops a container containing everything that was inside of it. So, grab all of that. Grab this as well. Now, I would put the core in the dart and uh, basically try to fix it and fly it out of here. But, I can't take both the hover bike and the dart with me. I mean, technically I could. The hover bike does, I believe, have landing pads on it. Uh, so if I go to devices, which I don't think it will tell me, but uh, it's not considered an actual device, but if you look at CPU statistics, uh, I'll get to this if and when I ever get around to actual building, we do see docking pads here. So if I can somehow ramp the uh, hover bike onto the top of the dart, I should technically be able to um, land on it, it'll dock with the dart, and I can technically take both with me. But I'm not going to do that for right now. Main reason, mainly because the hover vehicle doesn't get that high. Uh, the basic hover jets that it uses only gives you a maximum clearance of one and a half meters, which is about half of what the standard repulsor engines get you. But they're meant to be basic, so it's a basic ship. And besides, I technically already have a copy of the dart somewhere, I believe. I think I did. Software test. So I should probably check under D. No, I do not. Huh. Do I have a hover bike at least? No, I guess not. I think the dart, the dart is part of the prefab ones. As I look at hover vehicles. There's a blue dart right there. Yeah, one of the things I do and sorry, uh, one th one of the things I do like doing when I find uh, damaged hover vehicles and um, small vehicles and capital vessels, I actually enjoy uh, flagging them as mine, taking them back to base and repairing and refurbishing them. So always fun. I am going to crash the hover bike into something. And then park it over here. Here's the radiation that I talked about. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the hover, uh, hover, 
portable constructor back down here and everything that I don't technically need with me I'm going to put inside of it. Just as a kind of storage just to keep it out of the way. Also put the tent down as well as the uh, heater. Put you there. I probably don't need the detector. So I'll stash that in the constructor as well. This is this. sort everything for ease of use. Put this away as well. Because as I said, I know it's coming. The console should be inside. Also, I should probably take this time to uh, back up a save file. Easy, so what was it again? AI route 34. Like, hop over it the wrong way. Show enter code or ID to access, retry. Access violation. Protocol compromised. Starting self-destruct sequence. And now we should leave. So the generator is suddenly emitting high frequencies. We should leave. We walk far enough away. And it goes boom. We say, what the? And enemy troops are inbound. It's a trap. Because of course it is. And then these drones appear. And then we run. Because they are here to kill us. Defend position. There really isn't much of a position to defend. So. That goes away. Discover the new faction, the Xerox, Xerox Empire. You can even see where that's going. In the west. There we are. There we go. And victory! So, if we get there fast enough, that was close, yes it was. We can actually salvage the wreckage of or corpses of anything we can find. I analyzed the situation, very likely Xerox found out how to decode the message or observing the wreckage. Oh goody. Fuel packs. Seems so, now the sure has gone cold without the teleporter intact. Waiting for the story to advance. We might need to find some help. Alright, and that starts chapter 2, Tales of the Past. While, we crashed, uh, while you were crashing onto this planet, the scan detected some travel structures not too far away from the crash site. You should find one of these structures and make contact with the natives and learn something about this planet. It might be vital to, uh, for your journey or for the survival of every living being. That kind of foreshadowing something, I guess. So, um, is that. If we get back to the hover bike, if I can remember where I put it. Should be down this, yeah, down this hill. Here we are. Here's the tent. So we need to speak the chief, and the chief is all the way over there. So just pile all this shiny, shiny stuff into the constructor just for fun. Take a nap. Oh, I'm not taking that. Uh, have uh, some energy bars. A snack. So now all we got to do is head to the. Uh, small Talon Settlement, 1.62 miles that way, and uh, see what's going on and proceed with the storyline such as it is, 
and uh, eventually we'll meet new people and find other things. Oh, one thing that I forgot. Uh, if we look at the factions, there's a variety of factions. Quite a few, actually. They keep adding them. Uh, so the drones that we just shot were the part of the Xerox M Xerox Xerox Empire, which are, at least in my opinion, the primary bad guys, at least of this planet or the game. And uh, they generally, I generally show up, blow up their stuff. They show up, try to blow up mine. Uh, it's a back and forth and back and forth. There's also the Polaris Megacorp. We haven't met them, and we'll meet them later. And uh, I'm assuming this one's for the Talon and various other factions. So. And every faction has a reputation. You can be unfriendly, neutral, or friendly with them. And uh, certain things happen and uh, change depending upon your status with them. If you're neutral or I believe even fr uh, friendly, you can buy uh, and sell stuff from them. If they're unfriendly, they just try to attack you. And various things that you do in and out of their territory uh, affect the reputation that uh, you have with them, including killing people that they consider enemies. So if I want to become friends with the Xerox, if I want to become friends with the Xerox Empire, I would need to start attacking uh, factions that are currently enemies with them. For instance, the Polaris don't like the Xerox Empire all that much, so if I want to become friends with the Xerox, I, all I have to do is attack the Polaris. I don't recommend it because the Polaris are just as heavily armed, uh, and I start neutral with them, and they don't try to kill me on sight, which is what the Xerox people will do. But uh, all that, including seeing the talent, meeting the talents for the first time, is going to be another issue for another day, because I'm going to call it here. Everybody stay safe from the plague, and um, have a good day.